thanks for coming to the channel today and thank you for being a part of the Snook Family Customs label. We do appreciate you. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon. That way when we post new videos like this, you get a notification and you get to enjoy all the wonderful videos without having to go searching. Also, if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment, put it down below. So today, we're going to be making a blank for a lidded pot made out of resin and potpourri and a wood blank in the center that we're going to hog out later. So what we're going to use is me and my daughter Dawn, we already made this little hog out piece of wood. This is just basswood, nice, simple, easy, soft wood. That way less vibration when we get the uh, uh, lidded pot on the lathe. And then we also have our rose scented potpourri. Now this one is some interesting potpourri. It's got like hard shells, it's got the full size roses in there, all sorts of fun stuff. And then on top of that we're also going to be using the Famo Wood Glaze Coat for glazed coated countertops using epoxy resin. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mix up the resin after we put the potpourri. We're going to be just a little selective with the potpourri of what we stick in the pitcher that we're going to use because we're using this pitcher right here. It gives us a nice round circumference. Um, we want to make sure that we get a really good shot on it. However, um, when we hollow that out, that's going to give us a nice pot. Um, we're going to have a lid. I already have the uh, finial uh, that I'm going to stick on top. It's actually a drawer pull that I saw at Home Depot that was on clearance. And it's just amazing. It really goes with the resin with a little silver bottom to it. I just haven't decided whether I'm going to glue it on or I'm going to glue a hole in, uh, sorry, drill a hole in the lid that we're going to stick the finial on that we're going to make out of the resin and I'm still trying to decide whether or not we're going to put wood as well as the resin together for the lid or just make this an all resin pot. I'm pretty sure we're going to add some wood to it, I'm just not sure where yet. So we're going to see how this turns out. Um, this is going to be my first lidded pot turned on the lathe. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this in the pitcher, go ahead and put in the potpourri around it, make sure it's as evenly spaced as possible. And then we're going to mix the resin, pour it in, leave it overnight and then uh, we're going to film the hogging out and the design of the resin lidded pot with a little wood on it as well and uh, go from there. Hope you guys enjoy the video.
So we got it packaged pretty well. Um, there are some bubbles in it, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, this resin does state that it will help. Uh, it's pretty good about uh, getting the resin out. I mean, the bubbles out of the resin. And then we're going to let this bad boy sit overnight. I don't have a pressure pot yet. I don't know if that's going to come back to bite me in the rear. So we will, <laughs> we will see. So. I'm really stoked to see if it works out the way that Resin for Art resin does. It does say it's going to be crystal clear. Alright guys, uh, so I got the resin out of the mold um, and now I know why you should probably have a pressure pot when making mold forms with resin. Resin, when you put it together, it creates heat. Well, sometimes that heat gets really hot and it bubbles or creates its own bubbles or there's bubbles trapped in there from when you mixed it up. Either way, when you have a pressure pot, it squeezes the resin together, gets out all the bubbles, and you have a nice clean bubbleless form. Not so much with the one I just did. The resin seems to have reacted with the potpourri to the point that it actually at one point in time was boiling. Um, and I seriously mean it was boiling. I was scared to death the mold was going to melt and it was going to go all over. So I stuck the pitcher inside of a bucket and then stuck the whole thing out <laughs> inside of a plastic bin in the garage on a cold concrete floor with about 30 degrees outside. That way if something catastrophically terrible happened, no major property damage would occur. Uh, this video, even though it you're going to see my shirt change a few times. This video is going to take probably a good three days. It wasn't able to get done over Super Bowl weekend, so it's going to be done over the next week after Super Bowl, leading up to a release date sometime late in February. So if you're seeing this around the first Friday in March, uh, you know that this was actually being worked on weekend of the Super Bowl, before then, and then the week after. So, hope you enjoy. Let's get to work.
I have to laugh at myself because the lidded pot thing did not work out whatsoever. Uh, first tip I can give, I honestly know that I mean it, it was all expertise. If you're going to use shell wax, wear gloves. If you have any type of nails at all, wear gloves. I followed Nick Samedi's example and I made a potpourri resin blank. I made a couple mistakes along the way. Number one, I didn't use a pressure pot. So therefore, my resin blank had a ton, and I mean a metric ton of bubbles. Yes, an ironic statement, but you'll get over it. So it had so many bubbles and so many air pockets that it, no matter how squared off I made it, it was, it was never gonna be square balanced twice. I got about a third the way of trying to get it cut down. I was getting ready to put the tenon on the end and realized this is not going to work. So I saw the shape it currently had and I was like, you know, I saw a Craigslist ad for a set of five little, you know, wood turned mushrooms. I was like, well, you know what? Mushrooms have texture, have the ability to be tons of different shapes and sizes and plus have a pretty good stock to anchor them with. So I turned what was left of the blank into a slightly top-heavy mushroom. Now this mushroom definitely has tons of texture. I shined it up real good so you could actually see into it all the way to the wood. There are imperfections like here. I'll put some pictures at the end of the video so you can check it out. This potpourri mushroom. For having to make up for a screw up, I'd say it went pretty well. Uh, if you want to purchase this, it will be on my Etsy website. A potpourri resin mushroom. Say that five times fast. The textures, the the half seeds, like right here. There's some seeds or something that were in the potpourri that, as I carved away at it, it actually cut them in half, but they didn't pop out. The texture of the seed is still in it. Almost like reverse pine cones. But despite all that, guys, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Turning something that I almost gave up on and almost threw away, it's actually come out quite well. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was definitely fun to make. Uh, next project I do with resin will definitely have a pressure pot involved. My next immediate project is going to be a either a chalice or a goblet. You'll see that in the next video and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Take it away Cosmo!